kind of stuff right there. We have got numbers in there. We've got, if you count them out, there's a 4D lineman. You've got three linebackers, and you've got the strong safety down. So that's eight people in the box. Means around the, the five yard area of the tackles, five yards deep, couple, two, three yards wide, that is the box. Now, the number of offensive blockers in this is standard two back uh, set is they've got seven blockers. You can see they've got the five linemen, the tight end, and the fullback. That counts seven. So you've got one more than they've got. So it's just a pure numbers thing that, hey, even if these guys do a hell of a job and they have seven people, whip some butt. You got one more than they've got, so yes, you should stop the run in an eight-man front. Now, what does that eight-man front look like uh, when you when you go against sets other than two backs? Well, we're going to look in a second. First, we want to talk about an even box, though. Even half box, seven men. There's those same seven guys in the ba in the <coughs> possible blockers. We've got a two-safety look because we're saying, hey, we're better suited to stop the pass. Why are you better suited to stop the pass than the slope? Well, because you could get help the corner either side pretty easy. You could roll either way. You could play too deep. You could roll cloud coverage three deep either way. Whereas in this look, it's hard to get help to the corners. They're, they're pretty much going to know you're either playing three deep out of there or you're playing some sort of man. But for you to roll to a guy, that's not easy. Now, there's ways you can, you know, finagle your way and get help, but it's not easy. Out of this, yeah, it's easy. You can help guys. So, in other words, that's a better look for pass. And since it's a better look for pass, it's even Steven on the run. It's seven for seven. So now you can't rely on having an unaccounted for guy. What does all that look like when they flex one guy out? Say it's a one back. They got one back in the backfield. All right, and they got one removed. Well, to get one more than they got, it becomes seven men. The important thing is, again, remember, one safety look equals you got one more than they got. You can see they got six blockers up there now, and yet you got seven. But and on the same token, you're better suited to stop the run, but you, you sure can't go help those corners as easily as what you can if you had a two safety look. Now, it's the same, same situation, same set, but it's third down. Maybe you'd rather be in this set because it's more important to stop the pass than it is to stop the run. So you get in that look because you can help corners either way. Well, what happens if they got them both removed? You got one back in the backfield, they got that run and shoot look. Stop the run. You still got to be able to stop the run. As you guys know, that's why run and shoot teams do that. They want it to flex your way out, and then they want to have hat for hat in the box. Well, you don't let that happen if you're willing to get in a one safety look. They've got five guys that can block. You got six people to defend with. So again, even if uh, somebody messes up, you got one guy that's unaccounted for. Now, same situation, but it's third down. You're not as concerned about stopping the run. So you do want to get in a two safety look. That means if they do run the ball, they got five blockers, you got five defenders. So one of your blockers, or one of your defenders has got to defeat a blocker before the, the ball gets run out of there. If not, the next person is going to be outside the box before he can get there to help. So that is kind of the way, uh, just make sure everybody's on the same page when we get to talking about showing the eight man front in three deep, et cetera, that we want to get on the same page. Let's talk about the different types of 3D. The most common one, and I've got just a 3-4 defense drawn up, and yet we'll go on. We're going to do it out of under, over, et cetera. But right now, we've got 3-4 people in the game, three down linemen, the, the two ends in the, in the nose, and you've got four linebackers. Call them whatever you want, Sam, Mike, Mo, Will, just for example. And uh, the standard old 3-deep sky rotation, strong rotation, in order to get that, Everybody's base pretty much is a four-man rush. You can go off three-man rush, but four-man rush. To get the four-man rush and play three deep sky, you want to bring Sam, you want to bring the end. Now, you can bring him a two-way. You can go either way on this. But now you do want to balance up your rush. So you want to have the nose go weak because you got the end weak. So it's got a two-by-two two rush here. You don't want to have a three-by-one. Uh, it gets, it, it, you want to have balanced rush. You want to have guys in a, in a uh, lane for the quarterback to make it difficult for him to throw. You're three deep guys. Remember, they, those corners can be bail or off. It doesn't matter. They're the three deep. And we'll put out of that two safety look, our middle field safety is going to be our free safety. Our strong safety is going to go, we called it sail. It could be called other places, numbers, flat, you name it. But it's the outside area. We've got two hook droppers, two sail droppers. So think of it this way. Now, your rush is balanced. It's two by two. You're under coverage. you got four guys. That's got to be two by two. And then you got three deep guys. That would be, as everybody knows, three deep sky. 
Let's look at three deep strong rotation cloud and just change up between a couple of guys. We want to cloud this guy because that Z is a hell of a receiver. So to do that, we can still send Sam. We still got our same four-man rush. Let's cloud him, get a jam on this guy, and let's take the strong safety in the outside third. So they're just swapping jobs as all those two guys have done. Everybody else is staying the same. You took two guys, so you two guys, let's switch. Nobody else even had to know, just you two guys. But you taught that week, hey, our three deep, and maybe on third down, we don't need as good a run force guy. Our strong safety is generally a better run force guy. Let's just put you in the third, and let's get a jam on that Z receiver. So for that reasoning, you're playing the same sound three deep. You got eight guys to play the run. He's not as good a guy to play a run, but he's a better guy to bump Z, which is something you want to do is kind of throw him off the mark. Now, the one other way of playing 3D, strong rotation would be backer. You got cloud, sky, and backer. This is, again, a better pass defense. Um, it's not a jam on Z, but it's a better pass defense for the inside throws. So all you're doing on this one is, I want to take that hook area. All right, since I'm taking the hook area and the corner's taking the outside third, the only guy who can take that numbers flat drop is going to be the Sam. He can't rush anymore. So since I'm taking the hook, Mike, I'd like you to go ahead and go. So you go ahead and rush, and that means you've got to contain now because Sam's going to be gone. So again, we've got a two-by-two two type rush. That would be a good example of three deep backer or buzz, anything, or bronco, anything with a B word. A lot of people use that so they know how to denote what type of three deep you're playing. Remember, it can be sky, cloud, or backer, any one of those three, and that's just on the strong side. You can do the exact same thing on the weak side. Let's start off with the sky. But to get, to get the four-man rush, since you're, you're rotating weak, you need to bring Will, the weak outside guy. Again, if you're a 3-4 team, if you're a four-man rush team, it's set up anyway. Just going through this for the three-man, the three-four teams. So Will would come, you get a balanced rush, two by two. You get four balanced guys underneath and three deep guys and you're strong on, if anybody's in a set, say this fullback was here, the halfback was here in a weak, open type set, you're very strong if you play a defense that's rotated this way. If these guys rotate this way, maybe you'd rather play a sky. So sometimes guys build right in their package. Hey, we're playing three deep. We don't know what kind of three deep until we see the formate, the backfield formate. That's gonna tell us to play sky weak or sky strong. There's people that do that, and I know that you can do that too if, if, that's, if that's what you're gonna make your living at by just being a big 3D team, then that's something to, you maybe want to investigate, playing a zone the formation. Uh, and, and then it's going to put you in the best kind of 3D. Now, if, it, if you're here, you're playing man, two, three, I mean, you don't necessarily want to teach that because you wouldn't have time to be able to teach that. But if you're our 3D team, that's a possibility. Let's say this X is a hell of a player. You've got to jam him up, bump him up. So, and when I say bump, it, that can be from off four on, it doesn't matter, but get a hit on this guy, just, just to uh, slow him down, down the field on his release. So we want to cloud him, swap the free. It only changes two people's jobs on this. The last one, as you know, would be backer. In that, if the free safety is coming down in the backer area, you've got to send that backer, because he's took the hook drop that that backer normally would have. So that means Will's got to go take that flat numbers drop. Now, the force, let's talk about run responsibility, gap responsibility, and coverage. The force on any eight to three ratio defense, and, and three deep is, that means you got eight guys underneath, and you only got three deep, right? Only one DB has got the license to go for it. In other words, only one guy can be fooled. He thinks, hey, that's a run. That, in, in the typical uh, strong safety sky, three deep strong sky, that would be the strong safety. You other three guys, both corners and free safety, you cannot go for it until the ball is crossed the line. That's a strong safety. If he gets fooled, it's not terrible because he's, he's, he's underneath because it's not good, but it's not terrible. If a deep guy, corner, corner, or the free goes for it, well, man, that's six points right there. You can't afford it on a good play action team. You cannot afford to let that happen. So that's the way to do it on any eight and three ratio defense. Sky force. Let's talk about the strong safety. And it could be the weak safety in six sky force, remember? Or weak, whatever you call the weak rotation. We say six. Some people say six. Keep your shoulders square line of scrimmage, just like what we talked about those corners. Use your inside arm and leg. If this is the lead blocker, I want to use the inside arm and leg here and square with this. I want to hit. I want to keep this free so I can come off if the ball bounces out. If I did a job, 
Then, and all my partners along the line did a job. Every gap is filled, and the, there is nowhere for it to cut up. And it has to go outside. I hit the lead blocker, be it the pulling guard or the fullback, and I was able to make this play because I kept my left arm and left leg free. Now, he said, well, what if the, uh, the re outside receiver could crack you up? He, is, he cracked, yeah, he, it's corner replace. Corner got to become the replace guy. So you got to be very big on talking about that. And incidentally, if you guys uh, are coach on offense, that'd be one thing I'd recommend highly. And not only uh, as an offense, I'm talking about running the ball, not only corner uh, crack on the strong safety or any DBs, I'm talking about, I would, myself, I cracked the interior. Once you start cracking the interior and you're playing a team, that, and when I say interior, I'm not necessarily talking about an end that's down, but I'm talking about a linebacker, cavity backer or a sandbacker on line of scrimmage. You crack those guys, and if people don't have their act together on corner crack replace, and then now the safety's like, well, what am I, there's somebody else gonna come for the safety now. I mean, they're bypassing the safety, they're cracking Mike. This corner's gotta become involved, and it's a way for you, if you got a physical run team, which is what you wanna do, I mean, that's, uh, in my opinion anyway, that's a lot better than a lot of the risky stuff, is you got a physical team, let's go in there and let's crack the core of their defense and, and let's force that little Smurf corner into coming up and now you got a guard coming out on him. See how much he likes that. And usually they don't. Let's talk about under now. We're in an under front and let's talk about three deep and under. Got the run responsibilities, gap responsibilities drawn up for you here. In under, just uh, in case there's somebody here who is just uh, not uh, called it under or called it eagle. We're going to just say it uh, simply and it's not meant to insult anybody's intelligence. Under for us means when you take the two tackles and you slide them away. If here's a tight end, slide them away. If we say over, over means take those two tackles and you slide them over towards the tight end. Simple as that. Over is to the tight end, under is away from the tight end. A lot of people call that eagle or weak eagle. But anyways, we are playing three deep backer we wanted, in our pass drops, we would be, Sam would be that numbers, right? Numbers, flat drop, strong safety, dead hook. But now we're showing run force, what's going to happen in backer. All right. You got all, you got eight people up here, right? Okay. Now, we want to take care of, there's, there's four gaps that side, four that side. So there's eight. When balls run full flow, both backs go this way. You, the, you can forget about the last gap. In other words, as long as you got one guy outside, you don't need also somebody standing there for the D because there is nobody. There's no body there right there. So you got them all squared away. You want to take your <laughs> extra guy and put him to the side the ball is being run. So in this case, this is how we would look on run to the strong side and three deep backer. Now, what if the ball was run weak out of this set? How would we look? You got to get it coached up however you want to do it, but you got to have the gaps taken care of. And this happens to be how we had <clears throat> the gaps taken care of on our under three deep backer coverage and they ran the ball weak. Well now in instead of the wheel coming this way, Mike this way and him extra, let's go outside. We want the extra where the ball is run. We want two guys outside there. Means you gotta go A, means you gotta go B. Again, it's something where it, if, if it's your system, you're gonna be a big under team. I'd recommend that you got it worked out where you can get extra help and you don't have two guys standing outside on a vacant side where you really don't need two guys just standing there. You always want to have eight guys, but you want to have the extra, you want to have seven gaps filled and the extra one going where the ball is, either strong or weak. And do the same thing out over or whatever front that is that you are playing. So that was 3D backer. Let's look at, uh, now let's look at the weak rotation. Remember, our number for weak rotation was six. Our number for strong rotation was three. Let's look at six sky. We're in under and we call it six sky. That means if a pass showed, our free safety was the number, the flat dropper out here, hook, hook, numbers here, 3D, 3D, 3D. Now, run happens. We want to go, remember, you got eight gaps. We only want to fill seven of them. Leave that D vacant right now. And if he comes back, I mean, you got a guy outside shade anyway. So it means put him in the A, put him in the B to let you have extra by him. So you got two at the point of attack. <coughs> Ball is run weak. Same defense is called. <coughs> Especially say that this fullback is over here. You're not offset, weak set, where the ball can be run over here easier. Well, then, again, that's an idea that if you are a big 3D team, <coughs> maybe you want to be in, uh, in, the, in the huddle call, under zone to formation. That's how our call was. Under zone to formation, ready to break. And that just meant we're playing under front. We're going to play three deep 
but we don't know what kind of three deep until we see what the backfield set tells us to play. So if they're sitting there here, it's to your advantage to be playing this weak sky rotation. So they are, they run the ball this way. Again, you got two guys where they're running the ball, gap, 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 gap. Something else to make sure that you think about in a three deep is, sir, question? And in a three deep is the all go play, the, you know, the 999 play, however you want to call it. Everybody's running deep. You've got to make sure that you guys got an answer for that when you are a big three deep team. All right, in this, for example, and again, our numbers are different, but if you were to say, okay, corner, if we're going to make you responsible to go from the sideline to the top of the numbers, that's 14 yards you've got to cover. That leaves the middle field safety, well, we've got a big way to cover the way that would be broken up. So maybe you want to adjust a little bit. So maybe you make it more equitable by saying, corner, as you go to two yards inside the numbers, ball's thrown within, say, one yard there, that's your play, not the safeties. Make a little bit more fair. The point is this, and you don't have to do anything like this, but the point is you better, if you are a three deep team, you better have talked it out beforehand. They run, they get in a two by two set, and they got four guys on the snap going like that, and you're that middle of the field safety, you're gonna wanna know where am I responsible for? What's the corner responsible for? And then not just let it be thrown in the game and then just chew his ass bad. I mean, you can't do that to the guy. You gotta talk about beforehand how are we playing this play. It's not only in three deep, I mean any two deep, quarter, quarter halves, better have an answer for all four verticals, who's got what. Our three deep, uh, we're still on three deep right now, let's talk about play action, pick up rules. The easiest way for myself to learn how to do this was to visualize, remember you got four guys underneath, so I just drew four boxes. Now we just give them rules. Now we're talking standard play action to the tight end, there's a tight end side. Standard play action, double fake, slide weak to the tight end side. Our rules are whoever, because remember, you could be changed up. You could be in uh, three cloud or six sky. I mean, it's not just three sky, right? You can change up. So it's, you teach it by who's ever in those spots. If you're in that first spot, that number's drop, you got first out to the flat. If you're in that number two spot, you got the check down. You're where the action's coming at, you're the one who's got the right to be fooled. I mean, it's coming right at you. It's gonna be harder for you to get depth than anybody else. Number three, you're the guy who's got to be deep. He's got to end up taking the, uh, the uh, uh, dig or if the Y is vertical. It's not a, y, not a tight end cross, but the tight end goes vertical. You've got to be the guy carry that thing until it gets to the free safety. If you're in that fourth spot, you have got the tight end on the cross. Remember, it's not the three spot. Tight end runs across. It's not the three. He's got to get back for the dig. They'll run the next dig here on this side. It's the fourth guy who's got that. So for an example, the, the two types of play action out of I that you would see strong play action, that is, would be this. All right, there is that one spot he's going, there's the first in the flat. There's the second guy, he gets, he can jump up on chest. Third guy's got to, he got to go carry it until he gets to the middle field safety. Fourth guy's got to get back and try to get underneath X. The more common play action would be the tight end cross, as you all know, X dig or Z dig. First out to the flat, jump the check down. And the third guy, you go help on the dig, help that corner, chase it down. Fourth guy's got the Y cross. Important thing to do is distinguish between three and four for your guys so they know what their job is. And to make it, now to go ahead and just draw it up, we drew up here, we are in under, and we've got that weak sky, six sky. Remember, there's under formation. The tight ends are to the, uh, tackles are away from the tight end. Free safety's down to the open side, there's six sky. And you got the two type play actions, the one that's more common you can see right here. Fourth guy's got the Y cross. Third spot has got the help the corner with the X dig. Okay, so far? talk about too deep. We'll get through this and then we'll have some time to be able to put some schemes up that uh, are going to affect you guys. Okay, there are two kinds of too deep. And, and that what determines this is what happens on that 999 play when everybody's going vertical. It's either A, you're going to have this be the safety's responsible for the outside throw, or he's a true over the top guy, or B, you're reading it and it becomes quarters where they all go deep, it's the, and they throw the outside fade, you're going to yell at the outside corner. It's just, again, you got to have that way down before you even get into the season. How are you going to teach your guys? They throw that play, whose responsibility is that? And there's, those are two different kinds of two deep. So let's look at them. The hard jam, the true over the top stuff, their, their responsibilities would be this. This is drawn up in an over front now, remember? There's those two tackles there slid over to the tight end here. And we can go over gap responsibilities over at the end of this session, we'll have time. 
So your job is to be over the top for the safeties. Corners, we jam and go to that sail, as we called it, or remember, that flat numbers, whatever your version is that you're calling that thing. The number two guys, they got hook, if the curl was to run, if the outside players run a, a hook, or the inside players run a, a, to stick out, or China, or people where the receivers, they, they uh, uh, stutter and then come in. And a lot of times when you get that, you get the corner wrap behind it. Some people call it Zoom or Smash. China is just one name that people call it. And then the third guy, the Mike, he's the vertical guy. He's got to carry. If you got halves, you need somebody to carry. And it could be the other way where Mike stays short and Salmon will carry. The only problem, there's some problems with if you do it that way, which you're welcome to see me uh, after this if you, if you do carry it that way to, to brush up on. Now the soft read where it would be if they all go deep where the corner's responsible. Now, a lot of times when you do that, you don't jam because you're reading as a corner. So, oh, I'm sorry, I, you guys need to tell me when I stick my head up there in that way, I'll just keep doing this. Um, so what we need to do is corners read inside. If number two, there's, if you name it one, two, three on this side, one, two on that side, if two goes deep, then you got to stay deep on one. You're reading two, but you're staying outside, just like similar to that corner that was bailing in three deep this morning, or last hour, and you are going to be responsible. As long as two deep, you're responsible for one because we let the strong safety stay inside on number two. In other words, this defense becomes, on all goes, it becomes like straight quarters. So it's a read two deep. And that means you're th you do not need to carry a guy if you're underneath three guys. Because again, if anybody goes downfield, they got guys downfield. You got guys downfield for them. So you match up your three underneath guys on those three. But once they go deep, let them go. You got somebody behind you. So let's look at now that 999 play, the all go play against with hard jam. Who's responsible and who does what? All right, there the receivers, they all took off, all four of them. Remember, you need one carry guy, right, in a hard jam defense, and that's the number three guy, the Mike. He carries because the safety's got a two-way go, right? So he needs a carrier. His carrier on the inside is Mike. His carrier on the outside is the left corner in this case. I mean, Sam would match up with this. Will, he, did, he only carries 15. He doesn't carry the whole way. And we've got a carrier underneath on the corner, and then the safety is a two-way go. That's what that play would look like versus the all-go play, the all-go defense versus... Uh, the hard jam. Now let's look at the read defense first of that play. All that means is 100% means corner, you are 100% responsible for that fade. The safety staying inside. Remember, that becomes quarters. This Mike does not need to carry deep. You do not need a vertical because he's staying inside. It's not a problem for him. Remember, if this guy went over the top and had to go both ways, it's a problem. I need a helper inside. It's not a problem. I've just got this guy. You can stay short, Mike. That's the deal with him. Now, play action. All right, we're in over. And let's look at the common play action they like to get you in in two deep. And that is that 989, they call that eight route when the, the, when the uh, tight end runs a post. 989, the play action, how we look. This is against uh, the hard jam. The hard jam, so you got a two way go. You need a carrier, which is the third guy in, right, which is Mike. So it means you got to carry him, match up with the check down, and then Will would match up with the guy going to the flat. All right, corners. Don't let that guy outside. This is what we tell our guys. You got three. You got three choices in cover two: wide, wider, or widest. In other words, do not let the receiver outside. That's why we got you outside shade to begin with. We're not fooling around. We don't want you to say, "Well, he beat me outside," and that happens. But the point is, you got to start stressing it at the beginning. I want that guy pushed inside. I do not want that safety to have to run clear to the boundary because you were lazy and let him outside. If you do that, it screws up cover two. Not only does it screw you up in your passing part of the game, but in the run phase because your corners are forced. And if I'm going to sit there and let this guy outside, I'm turning my back and this and that, I can't be a run force. If I line up, there's the receiver. Ball's inside. There's the quarterback. If I line up outside. If I got to line up here, I don't care. And it depends. You can be bump, off, to however you're teaching it, but outside. Coach tries to get outside of me. I better shuffle and keep you inside so I can look inside. Question? Okay. Yes, sir. Right. 
I'm not sure. I myself have not seen that, sir. Um, if they are, I would, I, would be, I would be checking those guys out on how they're going to cover the outbreaks and the fades before the safety can get there. If they are playing cover two like that, if they are head up and letting them outside, I'd, I'd make sure I'd say, all right, how are you guys taking care of that fade I stick in there for your safe and get there if you're going to let them outside? Okay, as we said in cover three, only the, who's ever up, the safety that's up in cover three, or it could be a cloud corner in cover three. Remember, the underneath guy is the only guy got the right to go for it. In cover two, there's two guys underneath. They got the right to go for it, and that's the two corners. And if they're wrong, because it was a good play action, you can't yell at them. If you're giving them force, and it looks like a run, and they're reading their keys, sometimes those keys do look real. Now, not all the time, and the more time you got with your guys, the older guys you got, the more you can tell that's fake. He really ain't. That's not a run, that's play action. Then you don't, of course, you don't want them getting faked. But what I'm saying is your outside shade. It really looks like run. They, they block down, down, and pull the guard. Man, that's run. I'm going. I'm corner. I'm going. Oh, that guy just released outside, and the quarterback stepped back offline screen, it's fade. Then, hey, you're in a tough spot, but that's safety. Now you got to make the open field tackle. If they throw that, they stick the uh, flat fade throw in there before the safety can get there, then he got to make the tackle and chalk one up to them. We were in cover two this time. You got us. Sir. Read the in man line of scrimmage and then ball or off run. All right, in run force, these guys have got to show up. The corners have got to show up and take that B gap. If they don't do that, cover two is not going to work. And we will show you the reasons why very shortly. Speaking of force, we let the receiver beat that, or the corner beat the receiver inside. And in, in, uh, when he can beat the guy inside, we go ahead and beat him inside. And you say, well, man, they, I mean, they could block that guy right down and, and the ball's going east. Yeah, but the ball is going east and west, and you do have a safety doing this. Rather than if you stay outside and the ball's turned up, it's a harder tackle for the guys going north and south. So for that, it sounds very funny to say that, but that's the way, that was our preference anyway for doing it last year. Now that's an, on a normal four. Now here's a very tight split inside the numbers. We go ahead and just ourselves say stock. All that means is I'm telling that guy I ain't going inside. I'm going to hold on the outside, and I want you to fill inside because it's so tightened down anyway. Just uh, you know, possibility. Now let's look at the run forces out of over cover two. What's going to happen is this: balls run strong side. We're in over. Remember our two tackles. They're shaded on this side of the center and the guard to the tight end side and over. So those are our gaps. Remember, the one gap we want to let go and they run away is that last one out there. We don't need anybody for there. But we need all our people in these, and we got one extra guy, right? So we got every gap filled. Here's our extra guy. Here's our D guy. We do count on that corner being there. As a safety to the side, you got to check. Is it play action pass or halfback pass? i got to check this guy big time. Tell him to turn their head out and look at that receiver. If the ball is run weak, out of over two. Same thing. We got our, our forcer here. Our last gap we let go is this one. Ball is run away. We got our extra player by our wheel backer here. And we check the outside receiver. Is it play action or play or a halfback pass? Our cover two play action pickups. Remember, we need a, uh, the way we ran it, we need a, we were a hard jam team on the corner. So that means we need a number three mic guy to carry for us. So and that means even on play action, that's the hardest one, is the mic's got it. The second guy inside, you got the three bubble look. Their second backer's got to be the guy who's got to carry that tight end. So that's what he looked like. Now that means our wheel has got to be the guy that's got help on the, on the dig and react up on the flat. Otherwise, see, our Sam's gone on that fullback flat. Mike's gone, so now you got a two-way stretch. So you got dig, and you got the check down here. So it, this guy gets in the middle of the two for ourselves is the way we, that we played that. Tight end cross. This, remember, your last guy has got to be just like what we did in 3D, but it's the last guy. Now you got five boxes underneath in cover two. You got the corner out here. One, two, three, four, five underneath, not four. But your last box is a guy that takes that Y cross. Will takes the dig. 
how that look, combination looks between that thing we called China earlier. That would be a better example of a China than myself trying to describe it. And usually get a corner route with it would be this. Our sales for our pickup would be we jam, we go back. Again, midway for this would be about 15 yards. They throw usually about 22 on the corner route. Now we got to yell, China, China. The number two guy is responsible for China pickup. Remember, he's a curl China pickup guy. He goes and gets that. Go outside, get him. You come back and you bracket that corner route with the safety. For ourselves, this is where we start. Remember, we got a more narrow hash. We start two yards off the hash. We would, ourselves would cross over and then pedal. Other people, there's nothing wrong with starting wider and pedal. In fact, that's easier on guys to do. But anyways, get to that and square up, and then we make the bracket on the corner route. Okay, we're going to leave a little bit of cover two now and, and hit a few other things we need to hit. And then we'll have some time on some more run fronts. And this is just going to be some general things on defense, calling call sheets, etc. how to plan on calling defense. You should have your call sheet broken down by two things, down and distance and the offensive personnel that's in the game. got to have your people, you've got to have your plan based on what you're going to do with how many people you're rushing. Because that's going to determine what kind of defense you can play behind it. So for example, with either a three or four man rush, you can play pure zone. With a three or four man rush, you can play matchup zone. If you're a man zone combo, you can do that with three, four man, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all the way down. When you get to five man rush, you can play a dog, which is mean a dog would be Five guys in coverage, free safety in the middle of the field, and you got five guys rushing. So you, you got, they, remember, they got five eligibles, you got five covering, you're six guys, you're free safety in the middle of the field, all right, and that means you got five now to rush, not four. So you're rushing five, you get more heat on them, and everybody's in man, and you only got one guy helping, he's in the middle of the field, you don't have anybody else helping you. Remember that we drew up earlier last hour, that lurk, that short and deep in the middle? You can't do that lurk because you're sending five guys. You can zone dog, which is all the rage right now. You can send five guys and play zone behind them. Or you can now, when you send six for us, that is blitz. Blitz means there is no safety in the middle of the field. Whereas, remember, dog, there is a guy in the middle of the field. Blitz, you're rushing six. So they got five left. You got five left. You got to match up five for five. Nobody, uh, nobody in the post to help you. Then you do have to take away inside. Remember, you're not trail. You're inside cutoff. Can't be outside cutoff. There's nobody in the middle of the field left for you. So just uh, as a way to, to summarize that, when you rush three, you got eight people left to do anything you want with on. They got five offensive eligibles. When you rush four, they got, you got seven left to cover their five eligibles. When you rush five, that's the dividing line. You got six left to cover their five. It can either be a dog, remember, or a zone dog, one of the two. Now, when you rush six, you got five for five. That's all you got left. You cannot do anything. You cannot play a zone dog when you're rushing six people. You'd be, you'd be, instead of giving up one zone, you'd be giving up two zones. That's too much to give up. So when people do rush six, they are going straight man for man, nobody in the middle of the field. Some more needs for a game, basic needs for a game plan that you should decide early in the week on Sunday. Decide what fronts you need. What's run stunts, what pass stunts? Now, and that can be, this does not have to be complicated stuff, guys. We're just drawing up just thoughts. All right, first of all, uh, run fronts. Usually, you're only going to play one to two. I mean, that's all we play. We'll play three sometimes, but you don't need to play a whole bunch. You don't need to have any, any more than three. You're starting to get a bunch. I don't know how you can get a practice myself. But now, as far as run stunts, we're saying that is still a four-man rush, but you're moving the tackles or the ends somewhere. Really, the thing you want to do on that is base that by backfield set. Yeah, how many guys in here, were in here yesterday when Rex Ryan was talking? He was really excellent when he was talking about backfield sets, telling you, tipping you where the offense is going. If the backfield set's tilted this way, stunt that way. It's that easy. It really is. Uh, then you got to decide your zone coverages, which, again, these usually aren't going to change, but you got to go through that checklist every week, kind of like a pilot before you take off. You gotta double check everything and make sure that it's gonna apply this week. Decide your zone coverage, your man coverages, what dogs and blitzes you want for run and pass. Now, if you're a substitute team, because they bring in three wides, four wides, whatever it is, do you need to substitute? 
Are you going to play nickel or dime? What will you play out of there? Red zone would mean uh, going into the, in the short end of the field. For us, it would be the 15-yard line on in. Short yardage and goal line. And then last thing would be if you're, uh, again, an automatic defense by formation, which there's an advantage to doing that. Now, one of the things we'd said earlier was you've got to know the offense, uh, call your defense by knowing what offensive people are in the game. Here's an example of a couple of offensive ID systems. People are, it's pretty common. They're either going to use color names, red, blue, right, white, etc., or card names, one or the other. Example, three wides, two backs. In a lot of systems, that's called queens, like cards and queens. And a lot of, in color systems, a lot of people call that orange. Now, where that would be, I'll, I'll show you in a minute actually where that become important. And three wides, one tight, one back, a lot of people would say that's kings in the game. So you say, all right, uh, you got your headphones on, you're talking to your spotter upstairs. Well, they got in the game. We got kings in the game. Okay, look at my sheet. And kings, we like to call uh, lurk. All right, we're in lurk. So that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, so kings would be three wides, one tight, one back. And in a color system, it could be blue. One advantage of the color system would be you can have color cards and stand there and hold it up. You're standing there, and, and uh, you, what's in there? Uh, purple's in the game. Got a guy on the sideline standing there like this. Your defender's in the huddle. Look over there. Purple's in the game. Okay, that means the, whatever your purple means for you. So they got an idea. It's like an early warning, advanced warning of who's coming in the game, so they got an idea how to line up. So that's just one idea on that. Now to attack. How people will attack you, and offensively, how you're going to attack people is going to be you want three areas of field cordoned off, and you'd call them decoy, live, and bait. Basically, you want a decoy. You want one person to be a decoy. You want one person to be live, and you want three guys to be bait. Remember, you've got five eligibles. So you want the bait to attract the attention of the guys that are responsible for that second area to jump on that bait and open up that live guy. So an example would be that common play everybody runs the, the, th the throw in the middle where they're going to throw the dig. They run the middle field safety off with the post. They go bait, bait, bait. Hopefully one of you guys is a D student, and you jump on that, and you open up the dig. So that would be an example of attacking a zone coverage. The way we break it down when we're teaching it to our guys would be every pass could be stuck into one of these categories. We say there's eight basic pass concepts. And we identify them this. Those, the, these two on top, the vertical stretches, those are three-way stretches. It means it's stretched th three ways, either in the middle of the field or the outside of the field. The area attacks right below it, those are two-way stretches. There's only two guys stretching. Now, it could be horizontal, like curl flat, or uh, excuse me, vertical horizontal, or horizontal. One of the other, curl flat or out-out. One of the two, but it's a two-way stretch. So we'd have those marked off being a strong area, middle of the field, or the weak area attacks. Double zone, that's another common term for two deep. That means these guys are big two deep teams. So we're, playing, we're throwing double zone routes. We're throwing corner routes, China routes, et cetera. We know these guys like play two deep. The, the HHS, high horizontal stretch, that's a fancy word for the 9-9, I'll, I'll go play. And you say, well, how is that horizontal? That's a vertical. Well, but the guy you're stretching is in the middle there. He's horizontally being stretched up high, so it's high horizontal stretch. Now, it doesn't have to be 9-9 nine, nine, all nines. It can be the two inside guys running the goes, and on the outside, you can have a couple of comebacks. That's a pretty effective way to run it also. Isolation means it's a pitch and catch to one guy. A lot of times, it's going to be an option route. You, you, a lot of people have that play. You guys are big. Uh, you got a, a great little tailback. You put him out in that. H spot, and you say, H option, you just get open. The rest of you guys are on locked routes, quarterback's playing pitch and catch with you. You get your best guy, you get open. So that would be an isolation. They're just going to one guy. So to uh, clarify how we call the routes, we number them. And we number them. There's a quarterback inside. We go, the odd routes are going to be outbreaking, and the even routes are going to be inside. And it's pretty, I'm sure it's pretty common, the same route as uh, route tree as most everybody in here uses. And those are the numbers that we use. Now, to show you how the numbers fit in with this, with the concepts. 
Remember the vertical stretch, middle vertical stretch? That's a three-way stretch in the middle of the field. Here we've got split backs drawn up. We got, you can see the middle of the field stretch takes place. This is the decoy. Remember we said we got three pieces of bait. There's bait, 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 trying to track that D student linebacker up there to jump on it, trying to open up the dig right here. So now numbers wise, it, uh, possibly if you want to teach it either defense system or offense or you don't need to. It's just if how, did, how do you want to get involved with it? Remember an in-breaking dig was a six for us. So we'd say six, 20, across would be a two, six, 28. Remember the post was the eight. And then we go word, word. It'd be uh, wide circle or wide uh, hook actually right here. So it'd be six, 28, wide hook. That would be one way of calling a play. Let's go on to the outside, throw that same three-way stretch on the outside of the field, the outside 3D. Run off, run off, the live area, debate, debate, right? So the way we'd call this would be, we would start ourselves from weak to strong. Eight, 79, hook, flat. And that would be an outside vertical stretch. And for them to throw this on 3D, your guy would have to fall down usually. I mean, they ain't gonna throw that. They, they, they're just running him off. They're tracking him up, and then who's ever got that numbers drop, sail drop, hook drop, or excuse me, a flat drop, whatever you're calling that term, they want him to see that and jump up there, and they want to open that thing up behind it. Before we go on, we've got to say this now about uh, some of this stuff could sound kind of involved. I tell you what, there, this is true here. So don't let it get too involved because that's, that's very true. I wish that we would abide by that more often. I can't give those guys too much to think about. You can give them some things to think about to take away, but, but not a whole bunch. Um, now let's go on to uh, a particular thing that we had, and I know that you guys have some questions at which we can go over together, but one of our problems was we had a great deal of trouble two years ago with a young corner, he was a rookie that year, on the backside of trips. Everybody we played says, this is a young guy. Let's, let's get in trips, we get this guy isolated, and let's just beat the hell out of this guy. And so we'd, we'd, have, we'd have different ways to come up to help the guy, but one of the things we did to point out to him that, hey, you're on the hot seat, this guy played right corner for us. We made up this, this little uh, deal here. This guy played right corner. They get in trips, we put this up, we said, hey, you recognize that formation? Yeah, there's three of them over there, there's one here. That's trouble. Now, see, the, notice the ball is on this hash. Right, that's trouble. Even though they're into the boundary, that's trouble. So now we said, now what if the ball's in the middle of the field? They got trips. <laughs> You're that right corner. This is true. We did this one day for our guy, our right corner, our young right corner two years ago. So when the ball's on, on the uh, uh, far hash where the guy's got the whole field to defend with. They've been going out, ma'am, after him anyway. <laughs> now, what we've got here, we've got some good time left. This is your guys' period, so it's going to be bam, bam. You, you pull out whatever you want to do. Otherwise, I'll just keep on drawing, etc. But it's this part is designed to be for you. I've got a bunch of blanks drawn up here, run cut, run and coverage blanks that we can go over. For example, somebody said uh, we're having trouble in trips and brackets or blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, this is your time. If not, I'll keep on drawing up here, but it's designed for you. So let it rip if anybody's got anything right now. Otherwise, I'll just start drawing. Uh, how would you uh, help your guy? How, how, how did you help Backside of trips? Yeah. I'll tell you what we did. Let me find some trip stuff. We went inside technique on our man coverage, our three deep coverage, and our two deep coverage. As crazy as that sounds, we took away the inside because everybody for us was throwing the slants on this guy. So we went inside, inside, and took it all away. Now you say, well, man, you are really vulnerable to the upfield throws on this guy. Yeah, but we knew we were vulnerable, and people, for some reason, did not, even in two coverage, did not take advantage of that kid the entire year. He stopped, slant, 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 and pretty soon, yeah, as you guys know, uh, you, you, your uh, games you exchange with people, is it three games or four games? Is it three, normal exchange? Three games? Okay, for us it was, uh, what we did? Four. We did four. So once we got past four games without him getting the piss beat out of him, then they kind of quit going after because the teams down the road didn't have our film to see, man, this guy's just getting hell beat out of him. 
So they quit doing it. So for four games straight, we inside, 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 and all of a sudden he's killing slants. Like he's just killing it himself. So that was one of the things that we did was we went inside technique on the guy. Good, good point though. Anybody else right now? Sir. Uh, I'll tell you where the guy, that's a good point. When you're in bunch, and you're in man, and you're not trading stuff off, you're not banjoing, the key guy is the guy that's online scrimmage. Who's ever online scrimmage, you got to put it right on that, in that guy's ear and say, hey, you're the whole key of the defense. If you get up there and you just strangle this guy, I mean, you don't let him offline scrimmage, then it makes it easy for your two partners. And when, when guys do that, it really does. I mean, I swear to God it does. If they don't, if they ease off, you know, stuff starts to get jumbled up, but you just put the big hat on the guy who's ever on the line. If you don't, if you, if you let this guy off line of scrimmage, you know, you're just screwing your two partners, so don't let him off. And the guy, you know, usually takes a challenge. For example, the guy we had a couple of years ago, uh, he was by no means any type of physical corner. He was a guy that wanted to be off and look, he was an older veteran guy, eyes, had a lot of skill, but he did not like this. Now, whenever we got in a bunch, though, and he knew the hat was on him. Man, he did it. I mean, he got up there, ball snapped. He knew I'd better just stop that guy up. And he, so he did. Good point, though. Sir? Give me your definition of four and eight so I know. Quarter, quarter halves. Quarter, quarter halves is four? See, I, I'm not sure what eight is. I know quarter court has, but I'm really not sure what eight is to, in your mind. Okay. Okay. Let's just draw it up. Quarter quarter halves. I can just draw it right here, sir. Okay, for quarter, quarter halves, a lot of times you're going to be in some sort of a weak front. You could be an under or a three deep and send wheel, but you want to be in a weak. It's hard to play quarter, quarter halves and you're doing any, you're either an over or three, four and you're sending same. You really can't do it. So let's go ahead and get an under. Okay, so for quarter, quarter halves, we are saying this is the half. Quarter, quarter, this is the cloud, all right? Now, gaps were going to be like this. The thing about, let me do the run gaps and I'll do the pass. The thing about on the run gaps, one advantage is which one of these DBs is involved in run? That guy, right? So to get him involved, a lot of times you want to sneak this guy inside, put him inside. Now, if you do that, that means if balls run away, you're going to let, remember, you get that two for one type deal, however wide it goes. It goes real wide, you put him outside. I'm saying you want to get that guy to come back inside. And if you don't feel comfortable with doing that, if you want him outside shade on this guy, then you got to leave these guys gap, gap, and you don't get that extra guy. So that, that's your call there. But as far as pass goes now, Okay, when we go quarters in the half, we are numbers, hook, hook, he's jam, and he's basically going to end up being the, the numbers again. Remember, you got four even spots underneath, and you got the three deep, and the one is taking a half. So what I think you might be saying is this guy is going to, instead of going truly to the deep quarter, sit here and rob. Is that, is that maybe what you're saying? It might be, that's be the only thing I can think of that you're talking about. If that happens where a guy is not truly a quarter guy, if he's not back here, if he's going to rob, then this guy better be inside technique because they run a post and he's up here squatting, then that's, that's him. That might be the only thing you, that I could think of that you're talking about, sir. Good. Anybody else so far? Zone coverage against, all right, trips on one side, you said? Yeah. Something like this, and two guys over here? 
Oh, sure. You mean three deep, two deep? I mean, we, we'd, we would call, whatever we would call, we would play to that ourselves. If we had two deep call, we'd play it. If we had three deep call, we'd play it. And I just, we'd realize we're, you know, flexed out. We'd have to have the appropriate guys walked out. Do you see a lot of no backs? Yeah. Uh, to me, it seems like the, the deal in no backs you got to be very wary of is when you got a man coverage call. I mean, be it your four man rush stuff or your dog or blitz stuff, and you got a guy walking out, that's where you got to really be wary of it. Now, as far as any three deep or two deep zone, as long as you guys have somebody covered down, remember, let's say, for, what would you rather see, a three deep or two deep for preference? All right, let's say two deep on that against no backs. All right, let's start with our corners. Let's go ahead and put over two deep up here. Start with our safeties. Here, okay, now, you got three linebackers left, right? Two of them are going to have to be walked out, obviously. Sam, and he doesn't have to be on top of that guy. He's got to be inside, and he's got to be just in a position where he doesn't let that slant be thrown, really, is why he's, well, he's got to be walked out. Now, this guy's got to be over here. Same thing, to stop that slant. Now, it means you do have Mike left, one guy left, and again, there's the third, the number three guys that side, so he'd favor this side. I mean, you, you got to be aware of quarterback draw, you know, trap that thing like that. So a lot of times on empty, a lot of guys, they will put in a, a, some sort of a game, a TT game where you guys are, hey, they went empty. These guys got a hell of a quarter. They got a Cordell Stewart type quarterback that can run. They did it on purpose to get us flexed out, especially if we are, especially, good point, in too deep. Because again, remember, you're in an even hat box. You're not in an eight man type box, right? I mean, one more than they got. You're in an even box. So if they get us, they know we stay in too deep. They get us flexed out. Yeah, we're the dummies. We walk out with them and then they quarterback draw stiff. Then a lot of times guys in a two safety look tell those two tackles, well, they tell Mike to tell the two tackles, all right, hey, they went empty. Uh, Loop or Tom or whatever you're calling this here with your two tackles and they look for a quarterback draw. Okay. Put that end Split him out too. Like that? Like that? We I mean we would still we'd walk off Mike to here, Sam to here, Will to here. But again, we'd put on those two tackles for the draw if that's what we're talking about. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody okay right now? Let's talk about this. Something I would think that everybody in here would have a great interest in would be zone dogs. Let's talk about uh, just the easy zone dog to run. Let's do this one out of under. And we're going to rush five and play zone behind it. Let's play three deep zone dog. You can get in any sort of a shell look you want with your, you can get in that two safety look or the uh, one safety look, it doesn't matter. But the point is this, the, the under, when you run a zone dog out of under, you want to have weak rotation or open side rotation. Excuse me. You want to go to the open side. So you want to rush five guys. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Let's just have contain and let's go B gap, A, contain. Let's say our will is a, is a heck of a player. Let's rush this guy, especially coming through the A gap. That can definitely, when you got the two ta when you got the two tackles over the guard center, and you bring that will in that gap. I mean, you're going to force something to happen right away. Either these guys are going to be damn good at putting it back on him, keep him here, or squeeze here, put the back on him, one or the other. But guys, the point is, on offense, they've got to know what they're doing. Now that leaves you got you got three guys to drop underneath and three deep. We said to do it to the open side. That means you take this seam, you take the middle, and you take that seam. So we've got three areas. Not four, but three underneath. Now let's go middle third, outside third, outside third. 
There would be a good example. That, that was one of our zone dogs there. That was uh, under wake. Zone open seam was how that was called. So the seam coverage call reminded these guys they're not all they're not going all the way out to the numbers. They're inside because you only got three underneath, not four underneath. So that would be a good example of a zone dog. That's out of under. Let's look at one out of over. Let's go over. Let's rush five. It's going to be just the opposite. It's going to be a tight end oriented coverage call. So that means you've got to bring the strong safety down. He's going to be the coverage guy. We'll go three deep like this. Let's rush contain, contain, A, B, and let's say our Sam. We've got a good Sam player. Let's rush him to A. Same thing now. I mean, you're really forcing the offense to uh, check out their whole card, so they've got to know what they're doing. They're either going to have to squeeze that and put the back on the tackle and squeeze with the guard or keep the tackle here and put the back on him, one or the other. I mean, because you've got, unless they're going to go ahead and rock it or load it the other way, one or the other terms that sometimes offensive guys use. That means you've got three guys left underneath. You've got those three areas. So you got a five-man rush. You've got security of playing three deep, but yet where you're negative is you've got three guys underneath, not four underneath like a standard three deep. So that would be an example of an over zone dog. Now, what happens when these guys motion over to slot, let's say? Let's say this guy ran over here to a slot. Well, we want to anchor our coverage. Our wheel would scoot out, and he would just take his seam from there. Our corner would scoot in, and he'd take his third from there. We don't want to run. If we ran that corner across, then who's going to be the outside third over there? Yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't. So it's going to be, we're going to do that. Let's go back to the under, and let's say what happened if they went to a slot in under. Same thing, they're anchored coverages. Corner says, oh, I'll scoot down and play my third from there. That's no sweat off my nose. Pretty safe, he says, I'm that open side dropper anyway. You know, so if I got wide enough, you said, that's me, I'm there. Still got the same three under, three deep, so slot does not affect it. Neither does trips, neither does uh, two by two, anything you name. But before you guys get going into that heavy, you got to make sure, let's say that you guys get together as staff and you, and you brainstorm. What would be some good zone dogs we could run here? And you say, man, this, we got one guy that's really a tear, and let's bring him in the A gap. Just make sure you got all the bases covered on who your three under guys are, who your three deep is, and what happens on motion, trip, slot, two by two, you name it. Just make sure that you got answers, because the worst thing in the world would be if you go out first day and your DB and something happens and they go, well, what happens here? And you go, ah, uh, I, I don't know. Can't do that. So my advice is have the, have the bases covered. If you've got a, a simple uh, open side zone dog, oriented zone dog, and tight inside zone dogs, then you're, you're going to have it under control, especially if you anchor the two DBs. Okay, so far, need to move on to anything else, guys? Anything else that's interesting? You, thank you. Need to move on to anything else so far? We all right? Let's talk about, um, talk about sub, some sub coverages, nickel and dime type stuff. Okay, on the top one, that's, there's a uh, three wide, one tight, one back set. Let's talk about that, that coverage uh, lurk. Let's talk about a man scheme. Let's say that we want to rob short and deep with these guys. So let's talk about the shades, if you remember from that first hour review that. And we want to go with our corners based on how wide is that guy? And you do not have to be specific numbers and memorize, but you got to say, hey, if he's out wide, get inside. If he's in tight, get outside, because you got help in the middle, right? So now let's line up, let's put two safety look. Because remember, this
this is third down, and we're thinking they're going to throw, not pass. Uh, we think they're going to throw, not run. So we're going to go ahead and get in a two safety look, and hey, we're hat for hat in the box. So let's go two safety look. Now let's say we got nickel. We definitely want this guy outside because we'd like to lurk to him. Outside shade. We've got dime. You can however you want. We end up putting the guy inside head up shade, and we've got Mike left for the running back. Okay. Now. What we want to do is rob here, go to the post. So remember, these corners, they're vulnerable on the outbreaks, aren't they? Their help is inside. You want to be outside leverage because you've got a helper short in the middle and a helper deep in the post. So that's why you're going to be high split rules. Now, when this guy goes in motion, yeah, you've got to go in motion. Now, as you come over, where would you want to be, inside or outside? I want to be outside, right? You got a guy coming to you, a lurker. That's why we call that defense lurk. You got a lurker coming to you. So you want to hustle up and run across and turn your hips. You want, you, want, you want that guy to go inside. You go ahead and go inside, and then he cuts him, he takes him. Now it's my job to peel off and help that guy because, again, he's outside shade. So that would be an example of lurk. We got, yes, question. Well, the way we did it, and there's different ways. The question is, what is that robber's technique? Who's he looking at? If you're going to cut the receiver, all right, you're standing here, your eyes are on the quarterback. You're seeing, is it run or, I mean, is it draw or is it pass? All right, now, it's, it's pass. My eyes go straight to the receiver. I'm looking. One of you guys is coming in, either the guy that the nickel is on or the guy, that the Z that came over, or even the X, but I'm looking. So I'm not even looking there. Now, there are other ways of playing it where a guy is a true robber technique, and on a snap, I, as a runner pass, it's passed. But I come down, and now I just free up and look at the look at the quarterback. Now, but when guys do that, then they usually are telling nickel, you stay on your guy because you're not you're not getting cut. You may or you may not get help, but that guy in the middle, he's just looking at the quarterback, looking to make a play. Or other, the other choice is, remember, you take and you got him, and you become the lurker. Okay. We got one more question. Otherwise, we are going to be gone. Are you guys okay with everything we've done? I will be here. I thank you for your time, and I appreciate it.